So we're looking at our third topic today. We are applying exponential equations to real world situations. And we are applying log equations to real world situations. Now, we spent some time in the first half of this chapter learning how to solve log and exponential equations. Remember that? Yes. OK, so we're going to start out today doing a short little review of those questions. All right. It doesn't like me. There we go. All right, so our first question, we have 6 to the x equaling 8,000. How do we solve when our variable is an exponent, when we have an exponential equation? We need to use logs, right? Logs undo exponents. OK, so we are going to take the log of both sides. Now, there's no e in this question, and there's no 10. So we really can pick whatever kind of log we want to use. We could even pick log base 6 if you want. But typically, we just use common log unless we see an e in the problem. All right, so we're going to take the log of both sides. And then where do powers go when we expand logs? They go in front. So this becomes x times the log of 6 equaling the log of 8,000. Then what can we do? Divide it out. So x equals the log of 8,000 divided by the log of 6. So grab your calculators. We're just using common log here. So log of 8,000. Remember to close off the parentheses on that before you divide by log of 6. All right. I'm getting 5.019. Agree, disagree? Okay. Go ahead and try number two. All right, if we take the log of both sides, what happens on the left side? Why is it just x? Yeah, because it's 10 to a power, right? And we're using log base 10. So log base 10 of 10 to a power is just your power. This just becomes x being the log of 3.91, which ends up being what? What's the log of 3.91? Question three, how is it different? There's an E in it, OK? So if we see an E, that means we should use natural log, right? But there's a few things we have to do first. Charlie says add the 5 over. So we're going to add the 5 over. We get 7 e to the x being 63. Divide out the 7, good. So e to the x has to be 9. And now if we take the natural log of both sides, what's going to happen on the left? The natural log of e to the x is just x, OK? Because this is log base e of e to a power. So x equals the natural log of 9. And you're going to punch that in your calculator and tell me 2.197. Yes? All right, question four. I don't see an E, so I'm going to go back to using common log. I still could use natural log. It's just not going to cancel anything else nice, All right, but I still could. I'm going to go ahead and use common log on both sides. What's our power? That x plus 2, and that x plus 2 has to move where? Out front. Be careful. You're going to move it out front and put it in parentheses. 
okay? Because that whole thing is the power that's been moved out front times the log of 7 equaling the log of 410. And remember, log of 7 is just a number, so we can divide it over. So x plus 2 is the log of 410 divided by the log of 7. Now that's going to give us a decimal. Keep that decimal in your calculator because we want to use it in our next step, which is to do what? Subtract 2. So x is going to be the log of 410 divided by the log of 7 minus a 2. What do we end up with? Good. 1.09. Questions on that? Okay. So the first four that we've just done, they were exponential equations, and we used logs to help us solve them. Okay? Our next two are log equations. All right? The log is already in there. So we have to use exponents to help us unwrap this. All right? So think of taking that log equation and rewriting it in exponential form. The first thing we're going to do on number five is what? Yeah, get the four out of there. Okay? Eight can be divided by four very easily. So this becomes the natural log of 3x equaling a 2. All right? Now, how would we rewrite this in exponential form? That's where we did the circle thing. All right? What's our base? Our base is e, right? This is log base e, even though we don't usually write the e in there. Okay? So we start with our base to the... Second power, okay, so e to the second power should give us 3x, okay, so e squared equals 3x. To find x, we would have to divide the 3 over. All right, so use your calculator, e to the second divided by 3. All right. We should be getting 2.463. Questions on that at all? Okay, at your tables, I want you to try number six. All right, what's our first step for number six? Yep, right in exponential form. Do our circle. I saw somebody draw in a circle. Okay, so we would say four to the third equals x plus 5. All right, well, what's 4 to the third? Okay, so we have 64 equaling x plus 5. If we subtract the 5 over, we get 59. Okay, now, the reason we reviewed all this is because we are going to be solving some more exponential growth, investing money kinds of questions, all right? But we aren't always going to know the time. All right, and time is that exponent piece, so we might have to work backwards and solve for that unknown time, where before we were given time, we, everything on the right-hand side was given to us. All right, now we're going to have to do some rearranging. All right, so it says, if we invest 5500 at 9% annual return, how long will it take us to double our money? What was doubling our money going to tell us? What do we want? We're looking for when we're going to hit $11,000? Okay. So if we set it up, does it say anything about it being compounded any certain way? Okay. So we can use our basic exponential uh, growth equation. So we have A equals P times 1 plus R to the T power. We don't have to worry about an n value for compounding. So let's plug in what we know. We want our final amount to be double what we start with. And we started with $5,500, and you said doubling that would be 11000 Okay. We are getting an interest rate, an annual return of point, uh, sorry, 9%, so 0.09. And the question is, how long is it going to take? 
So here we have that unknown time. We've got an exponential equation. What would we do first? And what's 11,000 divided by 5,500? 5, two. We knew that, right? Because we just multiplied it by two to get it to double. So if we're doubling our money, I really didn't even have to tell you what we started with. I could have just said, you have some money you've invested. How long will it take it to double? Because any time this is twice as much as your starting amount, when you divide it over, you're just left with the two. Okay? If I wanted my money to be tripling, I would be left with a three. All right, so we're going to end up with 2 equaling 1.09 to the t power. We just solved some like this. What are we going to do? Yep, use logs. We're going to take the log of both sides. So the log of 2 equals the log of 1.09 to the t power. And powers go where? Out front. So this becomes the log of 2 equals t times the log of 1.09. And now we can just divide that over. So using your calculators, we need log of 2 divided by log of 1.09. What do we get? I see 8.04. Yes? So it's going to take us about eight years to double our money. Questions on that? Okay. All right. Question two. Medical research indicates that the risk of having a car accident increases exponentially as the concentration of alcohol in the blood increases. The risk is modeled by this equation R equals 6 times E to the 12.77X, where X is your blood alcohol concentration. And R is given as a percent and represents the risk factor of having a car accident. What blood alcohol concentration corresponds to a 7% risk of an accident and what corresponds to a 50% risk? So we have to do this twice. Now notice here it said R is given as a percent. So the 7% that we're going to plug in, we don't have to change it to a decimal format. They've already included it in the formula as if it was a percent. So we are simply putting 7 in for R. Okay. Now what? First step, divide out our 6. All right. And I'm going to just leave this as a fraction because I don't want to worry about the messy decimals yet. So 7, 6 equals e to the 12.77x. Now, because there's an e in it, what should you do? Use natural log. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. And what happens when we take the natural log of e to a power? Yeah, all we have left is our power. So we've got the natural log of 7, 6 equals 12.77x, and then can we divide that 12.77 over? So when you're doing these again, we don't want to round any decimals till the very, very end. So leave it as the natural log of 7 divided by 6. You can type it in your calculator just like that, and then divide it by 12.77. All right, so what do we get for x? 0 0.012. All right, so a blood alcohol concentration of 0 0.012 represents a 7% risk of having a car accident. All right, I'm going to pause the video. I want you guys to go ahead and figure out what it would be for 50%. Okay, so what's the only thing that changed if we change to 50%? We're changing the 7 into a 50, right? 
So to figure this out, I just need the natural log of 50 divided by 6. Yes? Minor change? All right, what do we get for x? 0.166, yes? Okay. Question three. We are given this formula. It involves e to a power. It models the population of California a in millions. So keep in mind, the a in this formula stands for millions of people. T is the year after 2010. It says, when will the population reach 40 million? So what am I going to plug in to my formula? I'm going to just put the 40, right? I don't need all the zeros for the million because they said A was already calculated as if it were millions. Okay, so let's put a 40 in here for A. All right, how are we going to unwrap this one? Okay, we're going to divide out the 37.3. Yes? All right, then what? Okay, and what's going to happen when I take the natural log on the right-hand side? All I have left is the power. So we've got the natural log of this 40 divided by 37.3 equaling 0 0.0095t. And then can we figure out the log piece and then divide by the 0 0.0095? All right, what do we get for T? Seven point three six. Seven point three six. There we go. Um, so about seven point four, a little over, almost seven and a half years. So if we started in two thousand ten, when is it going to happen? During two thousand seventeen. Yep. Okay, about halfway into 2017, we'd hit that 40 million. All right. Question four. How long to the nearest tenth of a year will it take $1,000 to turn into $3,600 at 8% annual interest if it's compounded quarterly? What was that compounding formula that we needed? Our total amount equals principal times 1 plus, yep, R over N to the NT power. Okay, let's plug in what we know. What do we want our A to be? 3,600. We want our final amount to be 3,600. We start with 1,000. What else do we know? 8%. So we're going to put that in our formula as 0 0.08 divided by 4 because it's compounded quarterly. And our power is going to be 4t. Okay, so once again, we have an unknown exponent. We're going to need logs to help us solve this. Okay, so first step, let's divide the 1,000 out. That should be easy. You shouldn't need a calculator. What happens? Yep, 3.6. Now, can we figure out what 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 is? What's 0 0.08 divided by 4? 0 0.02? All right, so this becomes 1.02 to the 4t power. Okay. Taking the log of both sides. We've got the log of 3.6 equals the log of 1.02 to the 4t. And powers move 
to the front. So now it says log 3.6 equals 4t times the log of 1.02. Can we divide the log of 1.02 over? Yes? What's our next step going to be? Can you picture it? Yeah. So you are going to take the log of 3.6 divided by the log of 1.02. And once you've got that answer, then divide out your 4. What do we get? Anybody? What'd you get? All right, it said now, um, how long to the nearest tenth of a year? So we are going to say 16.2 years. It will take for that to happen. All right, I'm going to pause the video. I want you guys to try number five with your group at your table. All right, our last one. How long to the nearest tenth of a year will it take 8,000 to grow to 16,000? at 8% annual interest compounded continuously. The keyword right here, right? Because that tells me I need a different formula. I need which one? OK. So we need our PERT formula for continuous compounding. We want a final answer of 16,000. We start with 8,000. Our interest rate was 8%, and our time is unknown. What happens when we divide the 8,000 over? We just get 2, right? Our money's doubling. So we have 2 equaling e to the 0 0.08t. Then what? Take the natural log. And if I take the natural log of the right-hand side here, I end up with 0 0.08t, just the power. So we need to figure out the natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.08. And you got it to be 8.7. All right. 8.7. T equals 8.7. All right. And that's years? Questions? OK. So you guys are going to do page 490 to 492, questions 103 to 120. Okay.